Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook, and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. In a recent video, I discussed what happens when your body is exposed to extreme cold, a condition known as hypothermia. Left untreated, general hypothermia leads to failure of various organ systems and even death. Besides general hypothermia, though, there are other cold-related injuries, such as frostbite and immersion foot. What causes frostbite? The body responds to cold temperatures by narrowing the blood vessels, something called vasoconstriction. Blood flow to the extremities it decreases to preserve flow to the vital internal organs. As the blood is redirected away, these parts of the body get colder. Ice crystals form and tissue dies. Frostbite usually occurs in the extremities, but sometimes affects areas like the ears and nose. It occurs in stages that causes more and more damage as time goes on. The first stage is frost nip. In frost nip, the skin turns red and cold, and the victim experiences pain, numbness, and a pins and needles sensation in the hands and feet. Then there's superficial or second stage frostbite. The skin loses color going from red to white to even blue. At this point, tissues are freezing and the tissue texture changes, becoming stiff and waxy. Although frozen, the victim may actually feel the sensation of heat in the area affected. Now what if it's even worse? In deep frostbite, also known as third degree frostbite, both superficial and deep tissues are affected. The skin appears blue and splotchy and circulation is blocked by clotting blood. Even after rewarming, many will develop dark blood-filled blisters within the first 24 to 48 hours. Loss of sensation and malfunction of nearby muscles, well, these are common consequences. Although rewarming is appropriate, it may not succeed. Blue skin may turn black, a condition known as gangrene. Gangrene is the death of tissue resulting from loss of circulation. Once this occurs, amputation may be required to remove non-viable parts before infection sets in. A condition related to frostbite is immersion foot, otherwise known as trench foot. This condition was commonly seen in soldiers who spent long periods of time in cold and waterlogged trenches during World War I. Immersion foot doesn't freeze tissue solid, but causes damage to nerves and small blood vessels due to prolonged time in water below 60 degrees. Immersion foot's a non-freezing injury that appears like frostbite, but might have a more swollen, wet appearance. Rewarming a frostbite injury, that can be painful, very painful, but should begin as soon as possible in survival settings to improve the chances of full recovery. Most use warm water soaks, no more than, let's say, 103 degrees Fahrenheit or 39 degrees Celsius on the affected extremity for 30 minutes or so until the skin returns to a red color. The water can't be so hot that it's uncomfortable when you place your own hand in it. It should remain warm, however, so replace cooling water as needed. Note that the practice of using warm soaks to treat frostbite is different from that of general hypothermia, which is best treated with warm dry compresses to the groin, neck, and armpits. In superficial frostbite, clear blisters may form in the damaged area as the patient recovers. In deep frostbite, they'll likely be filled with blood, and the skin may appear bruised, blue, or otherwise discolored. Expect them to turn into dark blue scabs over time. Some of this tissue may actually be non-viable and require removal. That process is called debridement, and we'll talk about that in a future video. Patients often complain of burning or stinging, which can be treated with ibuprofen at standard dosages. This may or may not help the pain much, but will decrease the constriction of blood vessels and decrease further tissue damage. That's very important. If you can help it, don't use the frozen extremity for walking, climbing, or other activities. Although many victims recover completely from superficial frostbite, others have permanent issues with pain or numbness in the affected area. Infection is a possibility and may require antibiotics. Here's some other treatment tips. Don't allow thawed tissue to freeze again. The more often tissue freezes, thaws, and refreezes, the deeper the damage. If you can't prevent your patient from becoming exposed to freezing temperatures again, you should wait before rewarming, but not more than 24 hours. Don't rub or massage frostbitten areas. This results in worse damage to already injured tissue. And avoid the use of heat lamps or fires to treat frostbite. The area is numb, sometimes causing superficial burns. There is controversy as to whether frostbitten areas should be bandaged. Some advocate placing absorbent padding between frostbitten toes and fingers. Others suggest leaving it open to air. Prevention is hugely important. 
Wear appropriate clothing that protects your extremities, such as well-insulated boots and a thick pair of well-fitting socks. Mittens for your hands, they provide better protection than gloves. A warm waterproof hat that covers your ears, it's important to protect your head from the cold. And multiple thin layers of warm, dry, loose-fitting clothing which act as insulation. Have extras available in case they get wet. This is Joe Halton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hi, Nurse Amy here. Just wanted to remind you guys not to forget to visit store.doomandbloom.net for all your holiday shopping, gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, any day actually. If you want to help somebody survive a first aid issue, make sure you go to store.doomandbloom.net.